I recently conducted a poll on LinkedIn where I asked all of my followers and connections to let me know which functions in Excel they find the most useful. And by far the clear winner was COUNTIFS and SUMIFS. And both of these functions, as well as their sister functions, AVERAGE IF, MIN IF and MAX IF, are effectively IF statements which have conditions or have criteria. And there's a really important distinction to make here. In this lesson, we're going to talk about count if, sum if, and average if. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about count ifs, plural, sum ifs, average ifs. And those latter three are newer additions to Excel. The original functions that we've had for quite a while now are the singular count if, sum if, average if. So let's start out in this lesson by taking a look at how those work, and then we'll add a bit of complexity to it in the next lesson. What we have here is a small table. We have some sales team members. We have the company that they work for. We've just got two companies in here. We have their job titles, so they're either a sales rep or a sales manager. And then we have the total amount in dollars that they've sold. Now, what I want to find out is some information, but based on criteria. So if we take a look at this first table and just concentrate on this first one, my criteria is going to be microworld. Because what I want to work out here are the total sales for microworld. So we're adding in a condition where we have to tell the formula, perform a sum calculation of the total sales, but only when the company is equal to microworld. So we only want to add up those total sales. So in this scenario, where we have one piece of criteria, which is microworld, we use the singular form sum if. And this is a fairly straightforward calculation to do. So let's type in equals sum if. What arguments do we have here? Well, our first argument is range, our second argument is criteria, and then we have a third optional argument. How do I know this is an optional argument? Well, it's enclosed in square brackets. So every time you see an argument that has square brackets around the outside, it means it's not a mandatory piece of criteria. You don't have to include it in order to get this formula to work. Now, we are going to include some range in this calculation. So we're going to use all of the arguments. Now, our first argument here is range, and then we have criteria. Now, I like to work backwards when I'm thinking about this. What is my criteria in this formula? Well, my criteria is microworld. So my range is going to be wherever I'm going to find the word microworld. So I'm going to find that in the company range. So my first argument here is the range and then I can specify the criteria that I'm looking for. So the criteria I have listed in cell F6. Now again, I could have hard coded in the word microworld in quote marks, of course. But as I said, wherever possible, try and use cell references. Now, the final argument here is that optional argument of some range. Now, in this case, I do need this because otherwise Excel isn't going to know what I want to add up. I haven't told it to add up the total sales yet. So my sum range is going to be total sales. Close the bracket, hit enter, and there is my result. So let's review. We're saying sum if the company range equals microworld. If it does, sum the total sales. So that is sum if, where we use a single piece of criteria, in this case, microworld. Let's take a look at how this would work if we're counting as opposed to summing. So in this second example, again, we have one piece of criteria. I want to work out the total number of employees at Computech. So effectively, I want it to look through this table and wherever it finds Computech, I want it to count the number of entries. And that's effectively going to give me the number of employees that work there. So for this, we have one piece of criteria. So we're using count if singular. This time we have two arguments, range and criteria. Again, I like to work backwards. My criteria is going to be Computech. Which range am I going to find that in? I'm going to find it in the company range comma, 
my criteria is Computec, effectively cell F14. Close the bracket, hit enter. It's telling me there are six employees at Computec, and because my data set is reasonably small, I can just do a quick visual check just there, and yes, I do have six employees. It's also worth noting that down in the status bar, if you take a look over on the right hand side, it's telling me the count is six. Now, if you can't see that information, a little quick tip here, if you right click in the status bar, make sure you have average count, numerical count, min, max and sum turned on, so that when you start selecting things in your worksheet, you can see all of those values in the status bar at the bottom. So let's do the final calculation down here. This is just doing an average. So this time I want to find the average sales for Computec. Again, one piece of criteria. So this time we're going to use average if in its singular form. We have three arguments just here. My criteria is Computec, so the range is going to be company. The criteria is Computec. And the average range, well, I'm looking for the average of the sales. So I want to use the sales range. Close the bracket, hit enter, and now I get my average. So that is how we can use those three super useful formulas to return results based on one piece of criteria. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing, but how we can incorporate multiple pieces of criteria. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.